morning, everyone. So I'm Nadisha. Uh, my topic for today is APIs, technology that can transform your business into a platform. Uh, so before I go to the topic today, I would like to start with analogy. Um, so if you compare a, tele uh, a telecommunication business um, and a mobile app, um, so if, 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 uh, if you look at a telecommunication business, it took nearly 50 years for a, uh, a telephone basically to reach 50 million users. Can anyone guess how long did it take for Pokemon Go mobile app to reach 50 million users? It just took 19 days. I know it's not a fair comparison to compare a, a telecommunication business that requires massive infrastructure investments, uh, employment, people, engineers, and so on with a simple augmented reality mobile app. But the sheer capability of a platform to drive a business uh, and, and drive users to that business at a, at a tremendously fast pace shows you the ca capacity and the capability of a platform business to grow exponentially. So with that, I would like to come to the agenda for today. Uh, I would like to start by giving you a brief introduction of what is a business pipe and compare it with a, a business platform. Uh, how, uh, how and why a platform business model works. I would like to touch upon what is an API and how it is a, a intellectual property of your organization. I would like to briefly talk about API marketplace um, and then uh, governance aspects of a platform, how, uh, how the governance problems of a platform and how the platform should be governed. Then I would like to talk about the incentives, monetization uh, requirements of a platform. And finally, talk a bit more about some of our use cases with, with a uh, API platform, and then talk about how WS2 products would fit in in such a kind of an API platform. So I think we are all familiar with uh, business pipes. Business pipes is where uh, uh, simple business where value is produced upstream and consumed downstream. There's a very straightforward business model, very straightforward user acquisition model involved in a business pipe. Product design is primarily focused on your end users or your consumers. And then monetization would also be somewhat straightforward where you know exactly who's, who's going to consume your services. So good examples of a business pipe is a business like Walmart, General Electric, Ford Motors, and so on. So as opposed to a business pipe, a business platform would be a, a scenario where users create value for other users in the ecosystem. So your, 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 uh, as opposed to you focusing on consumers, you would consume, you, you would basically consume or, or focus on both the producers and consumers. Your product design, your marketing strategies, all that is augmented around both producers and consumers rather than just one set of users. Um, it, the problem with the business platform, it's very difficult to acquire users initially because uh, you need to have some form of uh, a minimum set of users to make a platform viable. So initial user acquisition is quite difficult. But once you have the platform going, it is very easy to grow that platform to a quickly developed and a, and a large business. Um, uh, in terms of uh, monetization and revenue, there is multiple streams of revenue. So you, you, you have to focus on innovative ways of uh, innovative ways of, of acquiring users, innovative business models to bring in revenue to, to your organization. So examples of a business platform would be Wikipedia, YouTube, and Facebook. All those are very, very powerful and very successful business platforms. So uh, in, in modern day, uh, software is treated as a commodity. So software alone is simply a commodity. There's nothing stopping your competitor uh, of, from copying your software, making it better, faster, and cheaper than what you provide. So it is very important to make sure that there is some differentiation factor in what you offer, and platform is a very good way of doing that. So if I quickly uh, go, go to this particular slide, as you could see, all these pink circles that you see are pure technology play businesses. And they are very large when you compare to your traditional businesses uh, in, in the global space. Um, so if you take, uh, and, and if you take these traditional businesses like Walmart, they are also trying to become technology-driven 
by now. So Walmart acquired Flipkart, which is an e-commerce platform in India for 16 billion US dollars. So the idea is that they also want to converge into this technology space where there's huge demand, uh, there's huge growth potential, and then compete with large PO player technology companies like Google, Apple, and Microsoft. Okay. So a quick look at the uh, pipeline of unicorn businesses. So from, from uh, 2009 to 2013, you, you, we didn't see much of unicorn businesses coming through. But after 2013 to 2017, there was a huge explosion of unicorn businesses, mostly platform-driven businesses. So if you look at businesses like um, Stripe, businesses like uh, GitHub, uh, Lyft, they are all platform businesses. And uh, you, you, this trend will continue to go on. You will see more and more business platforms coming up, and they become in uniform, unicorn businesses at a very faster pace. And if you take the, uh, the founding company of Pokemon Go, it became a unicorn company within, within a month. So that's how fast you can grow your business using a, a, a business platform. So there are multiple types of platforms. You're not, uh, so there was an age where your, your primary platforms were Facebook, YouTube, Wikipedia, and so on. So now there is a plethora of different types of platforms available that targets different niches of the market, catering to different demands, different requirements of users. And we will see this list growing in future as well. We would see new companies finding markets, finding needs to offer platform businesses. And then this will grow, grow on in the coming years and you will see different types of very selected offerings to different types of users through platforms. Okay, so I'll quickly move on to the technology that drives platform business. So API is one of the key technology that drives a platform business. And for those who are not familiar with the concept of API, so I'll quickly go through that this API concept. So you would have your company assets and services within your organization. You would need a way of exposing these assets and services to, your, to different types of consumers. It can be your internal consumers, or it can be your external consumers. So API would act as a, a bridge or a way of exposing those internal assets to different types of applications, cloud applications, web portal, B2B consumers that would want to consume your internal assets and services. These assets can be your databases, these assets can be your internal legacy systems, uh, your uh, CRMs, your Salesforce information, all that will be the internal assets that you have in the organization. So essentially APIs are an encapsulation of intellectual property within the organization and it is very important to ensure that you open this intellectual property up so your internal consumers or internal developers can use that intellectual property and build something valuable to your consumers or your business partners. So I'll quickly talk about the business value that comes from APIs. Initially, the main uh, value that, uh, that you would get through APIs is streamlining internal assets. You would have a clear way of exposing your assets to different types of consumers. You would encourage reusability of APIs um, so that, for example, if there's asset that is available in the finance department, it will be it will now be available to all the users in the organization so that the same uh, service or the database can be used by your engineering department, can be used by your legal department, and that allows, encourages reusability rather than them trying to create their own service that does the same thing you would encourage innovation. Given that your assets are available, you could build innovative services for your partners, for your consumers, and then through that, you have the capability of reaching to new customers, you could uh, gain new businesses, new revenue streams uh, with that process. And finally, you have the option of uh, providing a clear facade, standardizing how you would expose your APIs to different consumers. You could also enforce security so that you would restrict who can access your APIs. You also have the option of listing the APIs on a common uh, marketplace kind of a, or a portal where everyone could come and see what are the APIs available. Uh, 
define how those APIs should be exposed, documentation related to API, all that can be provided uh, to support consumption. And if you look at uh, customer reach side of things, you could, uh, APIs would enable you to reach new types of customers, uh, which was previously not possible. So you can create new products out of your APIs. You can reach to new partners. You could reach to new companies who wants to, who wants to do business with you. And there's a compliance angle as well with PSD2 coming in UK and Europe. You, you don't have a choice basically. You need to, if you're a financial organization, you have to open your APIs out. Um, so that's a compliance regulation and then you need to have APIs so that you, you are compliant with the regulation and this is seen in Australia now and then probably in LATAM region in future as well. So how do APIs help you to transform your business to a platform? Uh, it is one way of doing this is through a concept called API marketplace. Uh, Bhatia, my colleague, will be talking more in detail about this API marketplace concept, but I'll quickly run through it so that you get an understanding of it. So you would have your internal API developers who would create their APIs and then publish them to API marketplace. Uh, once you publish them to API marketplace, you would have your APIs, along with that, the documentation, uh, Vistels, Swagger files, how to guides, all that attached in one place, one stop shop in API marketplace. You would have interested developers who can be both internal and external coming to this API marketplace, skimming through all the APIs available. You will be able to search APIs. You will be able to tag them, uh, search by tags and so on, and then find the APIs that you require. You will be able to test them out in the API marketplace itself. And if you're happy with it, if you're comfortable with it, you would embed that API uh, in your website or in your application, so that now you are you have the ab ability to consume the APIs that are exposed by the organization. <coughs> so, what does this API marketplace provide uh, to you? API marketplace primarily provide the capability to expose APIs to different types of consumers. Um, there's a standardized way of exposing these APIs. It allows you, it encourages collaboration. Since you have uh, all the APIs in one place, your publishers and consumers can come into this API marketplace. Use, if there's a forum, they can use the forum and discuss about issues that can come up, improvements that can be done to the API, all that through one uh, stop shop for the API. It encourages reusability, given that, uh, given that it's easier to find APIs, you, you are now able to, we use the APIs much easily, so you, you can find what you need in one place, and then you can see whether it's comply with, with what you want to do, and then rather than writing the entire backend service by yourself, you can reuse what is available. And then there's a clear control mechanism, because all the APIs are exposed from one single point, so you could enforce security, authentication, authorization, rate limiting, uh, access control, all that can be enforced from the API marketplace the gateway of the API marketplace itself. Uh, there's a governance aspect to it. You have the option of governing what you have published. You could manage the life cycle of the API. You could version it. Um, you, could, you could define policies all at this, uh, at, as part of the governance framework. Um, if you are interested in monetizing your APIs, you have the option of tracking the usage of how the APIs are being used. You can charge back your application developers uh, for how many API calls that they're gonna make and then earn some revenue out of it. And then you also have the option of incentivizing, but in incentivizing both with both your publishers as well as your subscribers. So you could basically have intrinsic incentives, like for example, you could have a leaderboard of APIs to show which APIs are in most demand, which applications are in most demand. And from a financial point of view, you could have some form of a revenue sharing, where you could actually share some of your revenue with both your application developers as well as API providers, based on what kind of APIs that you use. An example of this is, for example, if you have like a uh, weather application or weather API service, uh, you would encourage application developers to come in and use your weather APIs. You will charge them for their usage, but those application developers can sell that service to some of their end customers and then 
earn some revenue out of it. So you could come to a revenue sharing agreement with the application developers, where the, the API usage revenue is shared between, as a percentage between your application developers and yourself as, a, as, as the platform provider. So uh, one important aspect with which I started my presentation is the platform effect or the network effect of a platform. So if you look at this example, the airline industry took nearly 65 years to reach 50 million users. Um, Facebook took three years to reach 50 million users, but um, Pokemon Go took just 19 days. So this, the time it takes to uh, acquire users is becoming shorter and shorter, and in future we probably see applications or services that has 50 million users in a matter of hours. So why this, why the main reason this happens is something called the feedback loop, right? So this is a, a napkin drawing done by one of the founders of Uber. So if you take Uber's case, uh, you would start with more drivers. If you have more drivers, you have better geographical coverage. When you have better geographical coverage, you would have faster pickups. If you have faster pickups, it encourages more demand and in turn, more drivers. And at the same time, if you have more geographical coverage, you would have less driver downtime that would encourage lower prices, more demand, and more drivers. So it's a feedback loop. Um, once you have this feedback loop going, the, uh, the business or the platform adoption keeps on growing at exponential rate, and you could uh, simply grow your business. Uh, in, in, you cannot compare it with the traditional uh, pipe business, and you could exponen exponentially grow your user base uh, at a very uh, short time period. So I would like to come to a real use case. Most of you are familiar with Dialog if you are a Sri Lankan. For those who are not familiar with Dialog, Dialog is one of the companies in the Asiata group. Um, so Dialog, uh, had, Dialog had tremendous competition from other ODA uh, providers like uh, Skype, Twilo, which is Skype basically for voice, and Twilo for SMS. So Dialog wanted a way of competing with this over their operators in terms of uh, becoming a more comp uh, offering more competitive capabilities to their customers. So what Dialog did was Dialog had uh, given that it's a large company. They had multiple core systems. They were most of them were a not API ready. So they wrote this API layer wrapping whatever the services they had. So once they had this API layer written, they had about 500 odd APIs internally. Uh, so they put them on an internal API marketplace so that their, their uh, internal organization, IT, IT staff, could access those APIs. So Dialog had about 20 different IT uh, organizations within the company, so they, they all access this internal um, API marketplace. And at the same time, Dialog went one step ahead and published seven or eight of those APIs on a public API store or API marketplace and then encourage people to come and use those APIs and create applications. So with API Marketplace, they also did evangelism. They also had, uh, they, they had meetups, they had workshops, um, they had um, API days that are involved, or that encourages people to come and use those APIs that, are, that were exposed. They even had a venture capital fund that was allocated to invest on applications that actually used their APIs and did something useful. So it was a very interesting model and uh, uh, a very useful model and it actually uh, is one of our success stories in terms of API marketplaces of customers who, who have succeeded with the API marketplace. <coughs> so if I quickly talk about the strategy that it takes for a company to build the API marketplace, you start with defining an API strategy. Ideally, your API strategy should be aligned with your organizational strategy. So once you define your API strategy, you come to your technology strategy. So based on how you want to expose APIs, you will define your technology strategy. And then you find a way to facilitate consumers. Uh, how you would do this is to figure out how you would reach to your consumers. Once you have that in place, you would go to empowering producers. So you would uh, have internal, if, if, it, if it is an internal API marketplace, you would have, uh, wrap, you would start wrapping your services, uh, internal services with API layer, and then um, 
encourage or empower producers to publish those APIs to a marketplace. Once that's in place, you would start evangelizing your platform. You would have hackathons, meetups, um, trainings, workshops around the API marketplace so that you spread the message to a wider community. Once you evangelize, you start incentivizing the platform. You would have leaderboards, top-rated APIs, top-rated applications so that you encourage both producers and consumers to come and participate in the marketplace. And then you would work on a monetization model and a model to analyze the usage. Monetization model would allow you to bring in new revenue streams as well as share some of your revenue with application developers and API producers. There would be mechanisms to analyze the usage. So you would basically uh, analyze how the APIs are being used. That can be used as a feedback to improve your services. So you will figure out uh, is there any area that I'm not covering? In that case, this data can be useful for you to bridge that gap and then provide new services to cover that area. It also allows you to analyze the capability of your backend systems. Do you have good backend systems to support API marketplaces? You would have more demand coming in. Is your backend services responding at a faster pace? Should you improve your capacity? All that would come through these analytics. Once that's in place, you would go to governing and managing the platform. You would come up with an observability framework. You would come up with a governance strategy in terms of how you would manage the life cycle of API, how, would version, how you would version the APIs, uh, when to release APIs, how often you should release APIs, all that would fall under the governance aspect of things. And if you look at the overall governance of the platform, it is very important to govern the platform itself. Uh, if you take platforms like Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, uh, this uh, governance is very important because the sheer size of Facebook can, can crush the small blogs, uh, small blogs articles that you are, that, that's available on the internet. You have the, once you have the platform, you should make sure that misinformation is not spread through these platforms so that uh, even though it's not a regulatory requirement right now, it's creeping up. Governs, governments are concerned on how the platforms are used by different organizations and governments are getting involved in terms of how these platforms, what messages these platforms spreads. So uh, may not be related to API marketplaces, but if you look at API and platforms as a broader concept, platform governance is very important going to the future. So if I quickly look at how WS2 platform can be used to uh, build, uh, build a platform itself, we have multiple products in our platform that allows you to do that. We have an enterprise integration product which allows you to wrap your legacy systems, um, uh, create integrations, create orchestrations, mediations that are required to, to come to a platform business. We have an identity and access management product which primarily provides you the capability to secure your APIs, secure access control, authentication and authorization requirements of the platform. This API management product which allows you to manage the APIs that are available, manage the life cycle. So basically API management provides the API marketplace uh, that, that is required. It allows you to create and expose APIs. It allows you to manage subscriptions, manage life cycles, collect information that is required, provide a very uh, robust gateway through which all the traffic will be routed through. And then there's analytics and streaming product, which allows you to monetize the API, so you would have all the data and information that you require. You can use that information to monetize your API usage. You can also measure things like uh, the latency of APIs, the platform, uh, coherence of the platform, what needs to be improved, all that can be collected uh, through the analytics product. We also do have solutions that are built on top of these products. We have a telco solution, we have open backend solution, and we also are working on multiple solutions on healthcare, GDPR, and serverless frameworks. So to quickly recap on what I discussed today, we initially looked at how business platforms are different from business pipes. We looked at APIs as your unit of innovation and intellectual property. We looked at API marketplaces enabling business platform businesses to become platforms. 
we, look at, we looked at platforms and feedback loops, how feedback loop can allow you to exponentially grow your business uh, when it comes to platforms. We looked at the importance of platform governance and the observability framework involved with platform governance, and then we looked at how WSO2 can help build a business platform for your business. So that concludes my presentation. If you, okay, thank you then.